But now let's pick up the pace. I want to introduce first uh, Roberto Chaveri from Costa Rica. Hello, Roberto. I think that you have a friend of yours that is here to speak with us. Indeed. Hi, Enrico. How are you? Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good night to everyone. And indeed, I have the pleasure to present Eric, um, Eric Brenes. He is uh, one of our STARS clients in Latin America. So Eric is currently the executive director of Costa Rica's Global Life Center Hub Initiative, which aims to be the first uh, innovation supercluster in Costa Rica. He is also the executive director of the Costa Rica Medical Devices Cluster. Eric advises and is in the board of several national international organizations. Uh, Eric has a BA in finance from America's International University, a master's in international management from Otaru University of Commerce in Japan. So feel free to ask him any questions in Japanese and doctoral studies on sustainability in Italy and Mexico. And finally, he is the founder of the Costa Rican Corporate Governance Institute, the Latin American Observatory for Sustainable Finance and the Mesoamerican Knowledge Lab. Wow, Eric, that's quite a lot of stuff, but we are very happy to have you here. Thanks for joining the Strategy Tools Partner Success Summit. And I hand the microphone to you, my friend. Thank you very much, Roberto. I hope you hear me well. Um, thank you very much for the nice presentation. I have, I'm very sorry, but I have to make two comments before uh, beginning. The first one is I'm very happy to hear that Enrico is in a sunny Belgium here in Costa Rica. I'm, I'm just about to change my car for boat. And um, the second thing is I'm very sorry to hear that, that Chris is taking Brazilian Norway coffee. I'm going to send, if you give me a PO box, I'll send you gourmet cafe from Costa Rica. <laughs> um, so we can start. Who, who, who changes the, the, um, the slide? Enrico or should I oh, present? Uh, you can present yourself if you want, uh, Eric, I think. All right. Okay. Can you, you see my... Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, after this night nice presentation and... Uh, comments. Um, I'm just going to give you a very small index of what I'm going to talk about. I hope not taking more than 15 minutes. Um, of course, it's very important to give you an, an overall context of the Global Life Center Hub, uh, the tools I use the most and my experience and some, some conclusions. Um, let me project this in, a, in, a, in the right mode. Um, well, this is this is um, an overall view of the of the last maybe eighteen months and the next I don't know eighteen months no no maybe the last twelve months and the next the next six or uh, nine months of of the Global Life Center Hub. Everything started with um, promotion with the Costa Rican Investment Promotion Agency um, and the industries. Ever since the very beginning, Engage Innovate uh, was involved. From the beginning, Chris was there. So I think Chris was one of the masterminds here. And um, you know, the whole, the whole, um, the whole industry started aligning, not, not aligning, but meeting to see uh, what the cluster could be, if uh, what's the name, what's the idea. And from there, the government made a um, the, the Costa Rican government made a decree that de declared the whole cluster of national interest. So some people said that everything started because of the decree, but I don't think that's right. The decree doesn't come out of nothing, you know. The, the whole decree came af after the work of, of CINDA, the, the Costa Rican Investment Promotion Agency, and the work of the industry. And of course, Engage Innovate was very much um, from the very beginning involved. So as you can see on the on the presentation from the very beginning, we start using the tools of 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 um, engaging the way from the very beginning. You see the stakeholder mapping from the very beginning, 
the cluster align alignment, I have to say that it's not very easy to align the, the members of the clusters. You know, I'll mention it in a, a little more ahead. And then after we were more or less aligned, uh, we start working with the Costa Rican national program, the cluster national program. And of course, we did, we did a pre-assessment. Pre I would say, this is a personal opinion, I would say we are in the, in the building capacities mode and uh, already started the strategy process. I think we are in the second stage of alignment and, and strategy alignment of, of, par of partners and, and strategy alignment. Um, pretty soon we are just about to start a prospective research. We call it the size of the prize based on, on, on a reference we have from Vietnam um, to measure the impact of the, of the development of this, of this industry. And we hope pretty soon to have a very positive impact in entrepreneur in, uh, in the entrepreneurial um, ecosystem. I have to say the entrepreneurial system, entrepreneurial ecosystem in Costa Rica is pretty small. As you might as you might my guess, Costa Rica is a small uh, economy. The uh, a range the the range of industries is not that wide and it's not that deep either. So we hope to change that in the. Um, in the near future. So this is more or less the journey we where we are. And I wanted to share this with you as a context. Um, right now we are in the, we just two or three weeks ago, we named the HOP Financial Committee and the Financial Committee is just about to start with, um, with the financial uh, strategy. Who we are and what, will, or first of all, what is our ambition, our vision? Uh, to create an ecosystem that improves the lives of Costa Ricans by promoting innovation and unlocks the economic value of the life science healthcare sec sector. So here's the who we are. Uh, as you might see, um, we already we are more or less. You can think of us like a cluster of clusters, but um, there are some camera, some chambers in the in the in the group, and there are some some other clusters. And the individuals, the entrepreneurs are very, very few. So it's not, we cannot call it a chamber of, of a cluster. So you can see the medical devices, which is that I also, I'm a part-time executive director of the cluster of medical devices. We just formalized in last March. We are talking about uh, 90 uh, enterprises, companies. We are right now in the in the uh, formalization process. I think right now we have around 25, if my me memory doesn't betray me, the pharmaceutical chamber, um, the biotech clusters, some entrepreneurs. We are still uh, are trying to identify private equity, private medicine hospitals, uh, digital companies. Uh, we still have to um, um, in identify them. Academy is just about to sign the, the, the papers to come in and the government, the, everything started with the government. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the government made already a decree, but it's not been very easy to coordinate with the government. We had had several meetings, but then the corporate governance within the cluster, considering the government is very complicated. So just to, to finish up, up, up with them, um, with the um, with the profile with the uh, context, um, I want to give you those the, the points that give you an idea of what we are targeting to. Um, this is a nation shape initiative. We wanted to have it driven by entrepreneurial development model, not by by established companies. Though those are important, but we want to develop the whole entrepreneurial model. Uh, it is indeed first and foremost drive by research and development and the uh, innovation capabilities at system level. That's the, the system level, at least in Costa Rica, involve uh, very deeply the government. So it's been not easy, um, not only because it's not easy to coordinate with the government, but because the government changes <laughs> changed maybe uh, two months ago. Um, the idea is to strengthen the whole steam based talent in the country, which I think is good, but not, not enough. Uh, we are uh, targeting to a high income uh, impact potential. We are thinking uh, beyond um, the, the investment, the foreign, the foreign investment. And finally, we want to bust the well-being of the Costa Rican. 
based on new on new health related uh, solutions. I don't know if you are aware that Costa Rica has an almost universal um, health system, which I think um, must be developed in order to to reach these these goals. So, uh, based on you know uh, the whole idea of my presentation is telling you about the the the, um, the tools that we've been using. I have to tell that I don't know all of the tools. I have to concentrate uh, this 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 last um, year of, of half of a year, a little more than half of a year that I've been directing the, the Global Life Center Hub. I've seen uh, uh, some um, strategy, uh, some tools from uh, Engage that I haven't been able to use as, as much as I wish. But for sure, the, close, the customer journey map, um, it's been one of the most useful for several reasons. Because um, we were talking, as you as you saw, we we're talking about different, very different interest interests. For example, the pharmaceutical uh, industry and the um, and the close and the medical device, and say uh, the um, bio biotech um, in uh, industry developing the virus. So we have very very different um, interested, very very different uh, needs, very different uh, approaches. So in my opinion, this tool was one of the most um, useful for enabling um, alignment. Without this, I think we could, I mean, at the end, we might reach alignment. That's for sure. I can tell you for sure, because we've been sitting in the table for, for more than two years. But without these tools, this will be, um, I don't know, two years will be four or five. So this kind of shorten the the journey let's say the journey because it um, made it clear to everyone what we need to agree on and uh, what sacrifices some industry have to do based on what so it was very very useful for us and uh, help us going through the first the initial the initial stages that's more or less um, the the main part of the of the or or the main tool that we use during these uh, initial phases. Uh, the other one, um, the other one was uh, the stakeholder analysis and, and alight, uh, alignment. Um, in here, we spend a lot of time. Um, maybe Roberto can remind me, but we spend um, I don't know maybe the last half of the last year trying to ent identify uh, stakeholders. Um, based on their needs, based on the approach, based on what uh, they will give to the Global Life Center Hub. And um, it was really useful when uh, Engage Innovate helps us a lot, um, touching base with them and, um, you know, putting very clear what they want and what they need, you know, so that helps a lot to build the alignment. Um, and uh, also help us to target the very few resources we have. So we decided that academia was very important, but due to the very small amount of resources we have, we do not concentrate on aligning them from the beginning, from that beginning. So, but I have to tell you that we had a very clear that we need them. You know, this is um, um, to develop a cluster, to develop any industry, you need human resources. And the, if you need the home, human resources well trained, you need the academia. So I have to tell you that from the very first, uh, if from the first six months, let's say, we try, we we did not focus on 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 academia. Uh, we are right now concentrated on the private university, one private university. We have identified another one, another private one. Um, in order to develop the, the talent, the, the, the human resources in Costa Rica. And right now we have a very clear vision on where and uh, what we want the public academia to be because they have way much more resources than public than private ones. So public academia yeah, is, is gonna be a very important part of research and development while um, private uh, academia it will be much more concentrated on, on um, human resources development. For us, um, I'm, what I just mentioned is very, in, in, uh, it's a summarize of a very simple uh, strategical thinking that if without this uh, tool, 
we will have reached this, I don't know, in two years maybe, and we, have, we would have spent a lot of efforts trying to identify where we want the academia and the, the, the private or the public one, where we want them and the, to target the, the, the small resources we have where. So these two tools, of course, there are many of them, but these two tools I just mentioned were the most useful, useful one for the specific moments that we were in the, in the, in the, in the Global Life Center Hub. And I have to tell you that in the last maybe nine months, it moved the needle of the, of the journey. It moved the needle pretty, pretty fast. I would say that in nine months, we probably advanced. Um, this tool allow us to advance from two to four years of work that made it much easier for all of us and align us um, and help us help us define the next steps. Um, this is another one, another uh, another tool that is helping us a lot to define what are the main steps we are right now. Um, 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 uh, uh, constructing the team and uh, we are uh, in the fine in the finance and budget and um, in the formal decisions and we are just about to bust and implement and scale um, i don't want to take much of your time but i want to make um, some conclusions this is these conclusions of course are very personal based on my my perspective you know uh, I really love the idea or, or the fact that the tools are highly adjustable to local conditions, you know, industries and situations. Um, I think Chris mentioned it from the very beginning. It, this is not a one size fit all um, approach. Uh, actually, I know that some of the, in Costa Rica, the national cluster program have 22 uh, cluster identify in different stages. And every time I hear, um, a specific cluster speaking on the meetings we have. I'm always, um, you know, adjusting their 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 speech on the different uh, tools uh, Engage has. So it's it's, it's kind of um, a very adjustable tool. The second one is that uh, something that is very important um, in any cluster you'll build. Um, it, the 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 tools helps align different stakeholders, but first and more and foremost based on trust you know all demands all needs all interests are considered they are all put put on the table and uh, that's why it usually takes so long to build a cluster you know but the different tools help this uh, help align this um, these wide varieties of 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 ideas or demands you know we we shouldn't forget that the different makers are richer so we have to consider all of, all of them and, and, and uh, the, whole, the whole work uh, must be based on trust. And finally, I would say that the, it clearly set, sets a secure path independently of the cluster mat maturity. So it helps the, stack, the stakeholder to see where we are. But first, uh, you know, this, it's very important to understand where we are, what kind of needs, demands of interest we have, and then what's, 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 the, what's the path to follow, you know? And of course, this is not a fixed path, but this is a path that we have to walk all together because it's based on trust. So the, the, um, the roadmap that the tools gives is very adjustable to the different stakeholders. I want to stop here and maybe open the floor for questions and suggestions and comments. Thank you, Eric. Actually, there are a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is from James. He's asking, what was the nature of the government sponsorship and what is their success criteria for the Global Life Center Hub? <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I, I am my, the, the first one, um, the first one is um, the, um, the health industry in Costa Rica is, is uh, I think you know, this is a personal opinion, but is a uh, well-developed. And uh, the industry, the, the, you know, from the public perspective, we have a universal system, it's more or less working, but also the industry is de developing pretty fast. You know, I, I mentioned that uh, we have at least just in the medical devices, we were talking about 90 enterprises. 
we are talking about 94,000. Last time I saw the statistic, 94,000 um, employees, quality employees created. And just, just to give you an idea, just one single company from the cluster of medical devices, just one single company has filed seven, um, seven um, uh, how do you call that, um, intellectual property files in the, in the register in Costa Rica. So that gives you an idea of the potential to the country. So the, con the, com the government was, um, well, in my opinion, they were targeting to buster this uh, effect, this positive effect from the economic and the social perspective. And the second one, Roberto, I forgot about it. The, the second question, Roberto. What is the success criteria for the government? How will they uh, measure if the Global Life Center Hub is successful? Uh, well, to be honest, I don't, I'm not quite sure how the government will measure the success criteria of the Global Life Center Hub, but I can tell you what, what could be uh, the amount of uh, jobs created and the increase in the quality of life in, in, to the Costa Rican. Uh, let me tell you that the, we just talk about the corporate governance of the of, of the of the cluster of, of, of the Global Life Center Hub, but we didn't get into the working groups, and we have two work, working groups, and I think one of them is really it has the potential to bust the well-being of the Costa Rican, which is which is the digital health. Almost almost no one is working in digital health in Costa Rica. I can tell you of two or three entrepreneurs. But there's a lot of space there for the government to, to measure success. Yeah. Um, we also have a question. If we're talking about a bottom-up cluster or a top-down, I would say a bottom-up cluster. And um, Jaco from Colombia is asking, how long did it take from ideation to execution? Mm, that's a very good question. Well, I would say it's a bottom-up cluster indeed. And um, when the government gets involved, it make, it make uh, things a bit complicated, but it helps a lot. Um, you know, thinking that the government is you know, at the top and we are building a bottom up, you know. Um, from idea to completion, pro probably Roberto has a better idea than me because I've been involved with, uh, with the cluster very strongly, maybe nine months. Uh, but engaging Novate from the very beginning with Sin, yeah. I would say uh, two I would years. say that, yes, I would say that it has been already almost three years uh, since the first uh, work started. And actually the cluster is not yet in execution um, mode, mode uh, still in design. So I will say that probably, I don't know if you agree, but we're probably two let's say 18 months from probably starting to see the first uh, projects. I see some other questions and actually I think that we're going to cover um, many of them in the second track in the cluster panel. So I will, Enrico, invite all, all of those who are interested in learning more about um, cluster and these kind of best practices that can be applied to join the um, to join the panel and just I will wrap it up uh, Enrico with probably what what Eric said about the cluster journey map really that was a breakthrough moment uh, we, when we brought uh, that tool to the current leadership of the super cluster it really put everyone in the same page, everyone understood really what we were talking about, what were the core uh, stages, let's say, that the, the, the initiative has to go through to really become a cluster. And from that point on, really we started moving forward, um, I would say in a more um, decisive way. So Eric, thank you very much for sharing the experience. I think this is uh, definitely a great example of how to uh, apply the, the cluster framework in a very large and ambitious initiative. So thanks for joining us and Enrico, back to you. Uh, you're welcome, Roberto. <laughs>